Hi everybody and welcome back to our channel. Today I have some information for you about Epcot's Royal Tea Garden Tour, or actually the tea tours in general. Also, stick around to the end of this video because I have some vlog footage that I took during the tour and then after the tour with the tour guides. Um, so if you want to see that, keep watching to the end of the video. I was lucky enough to be able to take this tour um, about a week ago and before I signed up for the tour, I looked everywhere for information on it. I wanted to know what it talked about, I wanted to know what I was supposed to do, what I was supposed to wear, um, what it was going to be like, and so I looked on YouTube to try to find something and there wasn't anything. There wasn't any videos talking about the information of this tour. So I wanted to make this video for you guys so that if you are interested in taking this tour or one of these tours um, that hopefully this will be helpful for you. So before I begin I do want to let you know that I have only taken one of these tours. I took the Royal Tea Garden tour um, but there are actually three different tours that you can take at the Flower and Garden Festival. One of them is free, one of them is not, <laughs> and one of them is a self-guided tour. So the first one um, is free, it's the English Tea Garden Tour, and uh, this is one that you can sign up for the day of. You actually cannot sign up for it ahead of time. Um, you have to go the day of 15 to 20 minutes before the tour. You go to the Royal Tea Caddy in the United Kingdom, which is the little uh, tea gift shop that they have and you go there and sign up for the time of the tour that you would like to take. These tours are first come first serve though so if you go and you want to take a tour at a certain time and all of the slots are filled then unfortunately you will have to um, choose a different time because they, they are first come first serve. Um, these tours uh, last about 20 minutes and they are a tour guide guiding the group through the tour grounds. So all of these tours take place in the little garden to the side of the United Kingdom. Um, if you walk by the United Kingdom, you will be able to see the route that the tours take. It's pretty hard to miss it. They are ginormous teacups about this big, this wide, that have plants inside of them and those are actually the stops for all of the tea garden tours. So English Tea Garden Tour is the free one that you go to sign up for the day of. The self-guided tea tour, you can just pick up a brochure at the Tea Caddy, the same little gift shop, and you can walk through the tour path yourself and just read it and kind of learn um, on your own. And then the third and final tour that I'm going to talk about is the one that I personally took, and it was the Royal Tea Garden Tour. So this tour is $18 per person. You have to sign up in advance for this tour. You cannot go the day of and sign up for it. Um, tours take place at 9.45 a.m., which is actually before the World Showcase opens. The rest of the World Showcase opens at 11 o'clock, so the tour is pretty much over by that point. So it's really, really nice because it's nice and quiet and there's not a bunch of other people walking by um, while this tour is going on. So I really liked that. And you are asked to come and check in at 9.30 before the tour. So you go and sign up at the Rose and Crown Pub. If you are facing the restaurant, to the left they have an outdoor dining room, which is pretty much an outside patio space. And that is where the tour meets. That's where you sign up for the tour. And then that is also where you get the tea and scones after the tour. I will talk more about that in a minute. 15 minutes before the tour to meet your tour guide and the rest of your tour group. Like I said, there are about 20 members in each group. My particular tour had 19. Um, and I would say one of, like the one disappointing thing with this tour for me was that the tour group is a bit large for the size of the 
garden that you are in. <laughs> um, the paths are very narrow and small and in order for you to be able to see you had to kind of all squeeze together and it wasn't possible for everyone to see at one time. People were kind of layering up two to three people thick uh, just just to even get into the area so it was a little bit congested Okay, it was very congested, <laughs> um, but the tour guide did wear a mic and had a personal speaker attached to their person, so there was no problem with hearing them at all. Um, it was only seeing what they were talking about that was a little bit rough. So like I said, I was in the back of the tour group as well as in the front at different points, and I could always hear the tour guide really well. The tour itself for the Royal Tea Garden tour um, is about 40 minutes long. For the English Tea Garden Tour, which is the free one, it is 20 minutes long. So I was able to talk to the tour guides after the tour this time, and it turns out that the same tour guides do both of these tours, um, and it's basically the same information that they're telling you. It's just in the Royal Tea Garden Tour, they go into more detail, they tell you a little bit more about each um, story about each plant and go into a little bit more detail on the stories that they tell um, which obviously makes sense because it is double the length of the free um, tea garden tour but as far as the basic plant information it is the same so after you finish your tour for the royal tea garden tour the 40 minutes have passed you will go back to the rose and crown um, outdoor dining room where you will be served scones and tea. So this is included in your package, you don't have to pay extra for it, although you really did pay extra for it um, with the beginning of this tour. That's really what the $18 goes for. <laughs> um, but you get two scones, two different kinds of butter. They are served to you in a little lunchbox type thing. You'll see that in the footage at the end. They have big tables set up with containers of hot water and then these little plastic mugs and you can fill them with hot water, grab your tea bag, and steep your own cup of tea. So there wasn't a limit to how many kinds of tea you can have. I believe me and my friend, we each got three cups um, and it was totally fine. It was super relaxed. Now obviously I wouldn't go in and get like 10 cups of tea, um, but <laughs> feel free to try whichever kinds you would like. One thing that was kind of cool is that they had the different tea bags, um, the different tea types that they talked about in the tour. So if there was a kind that they, they talked about and you wanted to try it, you were able to um, at the end of the tour. So one other thing I wanted to mention with the scones is that they have one that is a savory, one that is a sweet, and um, one type of butter for each as well. But they do also have gluten-free options um, if you would like that. If you are gluten-free, you will be able to take this tour and they have scones for you. So as you are eating your scones and drinking your tea after the tour, the two tour guides will walk around the tables and talk to you. If you have any questions for them, they will answer it. And honestly, this was my favorite part of the tour because we were able to just talk with the tour guides. I think we ended up talking to the tour guides for about 10 minutes um, after the tour. They were just so kind and so knowledgeable. Um, we asked them uh, any tea questions that we had, anything about steeping or brewing, um, anything about differences in different kinds of tea. We asked them where they were from, um, how they got to working for the Disney company, and how they liked living in Florida. So it was really, really a fun experience. Um, the two tour guides that we had were phenomenal. It was just amazing. Um, that was definitely a highlight of my day for sure. So I'm going to go through quickly some of the topics that were discussed on the tour. I don't want to go into too much detail because I don't want to blow the tour for you. But they talked about Twinings, the brand, and the beginnings of the brand. How um, the Twinings created the tea empire that they have today. Yes, all of the 
tea tours are sponsored and created by Twinings. So all of the teas that you try are Twinings teas. Um, but it was really cool to hear how the brand, how the company came about. Um, every kind of true tea, so black teas, white teas, green teas, those all come from the same plant and the same exact leaves. Um, they talked about the process of creating and brewing the tea leaves. They talked about the order in which tea steeps inside your cup. The first thing that comes out is color, the second thing that comes out is caffeine, and the third thing that comes out is flavor. So it never even occurred to me before that like it would come out in stages. I thought it all just kind of came out at once. So I learned so much on this tour. It's kind of crazy. So the final thing that I wanted to mention um, to you guys is another thing that happened the same day that we did the tour. I got to meet another Disney YouTuber. Yeah, I was pretty stoked. <laughs> I got to meet Ellie um, from Ellie Stedman. That is the name of her channel on YouTube. She has an amazing Disney channel and she is originally from the UK but she is living in Florida as a cultural representative right now for Disney and it was super amazing. She was um, working the day that we were there and so I got to say hi to her and you guys, she is even sweeter in person than she is in her videos. So I will link her channel down below. Go check out um, her channel and yeah, that was really, really a highlight. So thank you Ellie for making my day more magical. thirties when our then Prime Minister Charles II Del Grey on his return from China he was actually gifted this kind of recipe. He liked the recipe so much that he asked his tea merchant at the time who happened to be Richard Twinings um, to recreate the blend um, and Richard obviously recreated the blend and it became a long-standing favorite in the Earl Grey family and was of course named Earl Grey. Um, interestingly with this one if you do check an Earl Grey pack you can see it signed by the most recent Earl Grey member of the family. Um, does anyone know about the Royal Warrant at all? No? So if you guys look on the Twinings logo, you will see like the little crown here. Um, the Royal Warrant is renewed every five years and it's essentially the Royal Families will check it off. There are different products with the Royal Warrant and that doesn't mean that they themselves consume or use that product. Um, this means if you are having a Twinings product you and you want to feel a bit fancy, you might actually be having the same cup of tea as the Queen. So that's something to check off if you guys want a little so pick I did me discuss, up. Oh, Lady Grey is um, a black tea, and I did discuss how herbal teas don't come from the Camellia sinensis, and this does mean that they're not true teas. Um, who likes herbal tea here? Yeah? Does, any, <laughs> does anyone have a particular favourite blend of herbal tea at all? I like peppermint. Peppermint? I like, yeah, that's actually yeah probably my favourite. Um, the reason that herbal tea is still called a tea is purely kind of through laziness. It's just placed in a tea bag and brewed the same. Um, because it doesn't come from the Camellia sinensis, it isn't caffeinated. Um, and it's, so you can drink herbal tea throughout the day, you're not going to be kept awake from the caffeine, which is actually a really positive sign for um, a really positive benefit from herbal tea. Herbal tea itself is actually comes from a mixture of uh, plants, flowers, herbs and roots. So they're all placed in and they're all kind of infused together to make the, the blend. So um, many of you guys will be aware that when you go to um, restaurants and you've had a hearty meal, they might give you a small peppermint sweet. Mm -hmm. And this is actually because peppermint is very good for indigestion. It means around evening or nighttime you can have this tea. It's not going to keep you up. It might have some other benefits too. So I actually think that this is a really special tea. I think all rooibos and red tea are quite special. And the reason I think this is because they all come obviously from the rooibos plant. The rooibos plant naturally can only, well, they try growing it in other places in the world, but they can only grow it in one place. And this obviously has something to do with the soil and weather, kind of a balance between the two. Um, the rooibos tree can be found in the very base of the Cedarberg Mountains in South Africa, and that's the only place it can be found. Wow. Once the tea leaves are picked, when they are left to dry, they turn a mahogany colour, so a kind of a pretty mahogany colour. This is what gives it the red tea name, so it's a red, that's where it comes from. Your brewing time is actually the most um, important factor. You really want to commit to your tea to have a good tea, and you also can't judge a tea really by its colour. 
So as I said, green tea is a much more delicate tea. You're gonna wanna brew your green tea two to three minutes. Um, and like I said, I found this out the hard, the hard way. I left it in and I got a very bitter tasting tea. Ooh. It was, if you have your black teas and you do want it stronger, by all means leave it in. Unfortunately, with these last two, that does bring us to the end of our tour today, sadly. Um, I've had a great time with you guys. I hope you guys have learned something, at least, or at least learn um, about a new tea that you may wanna try. In a minute, we're gonna head back over to the Rose and Crown where we will have tea um, being offered. We just finished the tea tour <laughs> and these are our scones that we got and then this is the tea that I have. These are our awesome tour guide. This is Brogan. No, you're amazing and I love your accent by the way. Like, I'm so in love with it. So this one is sweet and mm -hmm. this one's sweet. So the cheese one's actually savory and that's just sweet one with the raisins. Oh. And the jam and a clotted cream, which traditionally you would have the raisins and then the Earl Grey butter that Chef Stephen has made is for the cheese one. So you've got I'm really excited about the Earl Grey butter. <laughs> oh, you should. I think if you like your Earl Grey, you'll love it. Thank you so you much. Enjoy. If you have any more questions, feel free to ask me. And I know what wind's coming around anyway. So. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so this is the aftermath of it. Two scones, three cups of tea down. I am a happy camper. <laughs> but I look kind of like a freak. But I don't care. And, and then like chai would be considered like an herbal tea or? Um, no, it's still caffeinated. Chai is, yeah. Um, chai is, a, it's still, have you had chai before? Yes. Yeah, that's one of my chai, favorites. Chai, yeah. Yeah, it's how we don't have any chai on the tour this, this year. But um, yeah, no, that's still caffeinated tea. It's not herbal. So it's like, it's, uh, so it, is it from that same plant with the, the as mixes. the true tea? Yes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it is a chai tea. Is a is a true tea? Or? It's a true tea. Yeah. Do you know with Brogan, with chai tea? What basically? Do you know like if they use? It's a true tea, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's right. It's caffeinated, so yeah. it will be. It's, I think it's um, uh, it's 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 a bit like a oolong in that it's um, it's oriental based. It's traditionally oriental, so right. like I don't know what exact spices and stuff it is that they use, but it's not quite, it's not like your pure black tea. Yeah, the chai is from India, is what I think, yeah. Yeah. Are you alright ladies? Yes, Scones thank you. Yes, yes, they're, they're delicious. delicious. Thank you so much. Thanks. Oh, I have one more. Could you go through the steps of the black tea again? Like yeah, the four sure. steps there? So, um, first of all, after they're picked, they're withered. They're then, <laughs> they're rolled. <laughs> And then they're oxidized. Do the dance with it too. <laughs> Alright, so oxidization is when they're exposed to oxygen. So that's why I use the apple as an example. So when you have an apple open, it will obviously get darker and colour and brown. This is kind of where the flavour comes from and the caffeine comes from. So the leaf will just get darker. It's the same with um, like a rooibos tea. When they're left um, out, they actually, that's when it goes mahogany. So that's where the colour comes from. Already. Um, and then after that, they're left dry or fried. Fires, not fried. fired. So that's when oh. the was left out to dry. Um, and then finally, I think they're actually sorted then, so they're kind of sorted amongst yeah, yeah. the colours, so like you'll kind of try and match the colours. Mm -hmm. And that's how you get like the, the more intense flavour? Yeah. 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 Is yeah. that if they're more or less? Which, if which way does it work? It, I the darker think, they are, the sharper they are. Yeah, the darker they are, so it's probably more about the oxidisation yeah. process, the yeah. longer they're left to... But that's why you get such a like variation in colour. So like for example if you look at your tea right now with your Irish breakfast, which is a really strong black yeah, tea, strong brown, tea. and then you've got your the, the that colour of the green and I think that's and that's also a good indicator for flavour as well, I think. Let me know if you guys are taking the tea tours or you want to take the tea tours down below in the comment section. And give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful and subscribe to our channel and we will see you later. Bye. In Epcot, I did mention that this is all in Epcot, right? I think so. I mean, more. Let me guys. Let me guys. <laughs>
too. <laughs> One more time. One more time.